We are the Newbies, a travel family of explorers with an ambition to get our son Crusoe to 100 countries before he goes to school. And for the past 14 weeks, we've been overlanding through Southern Africa in a 4x4 with a rooftop tent. Before Crusoe came along, the Newbies were van lifers, travelling to over 30 European countries in our self-converted camper van. The last two years on the road have seen us visit three different continents. And now it's time for continent number four, our greatest journey yet. The American Road Trip. Our last big journey before we embark on our super exciting project in Portugal. If you're new here and you haven't already, then please consider joining us and being that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and leave us a comment because we love hearing from you. But for now, on with the show. So from the arch that we were at last week, which was in Reef, Reef, Capital Reef National Park, to a whole bunch of arches here at Arches National Park. This place is really cool. They've got 2,000 different sized arches. 3,000, I think. 3,000 different sized arches dotted around the landscapes here, all naturally formed. Um, and we are heading now we're going to drive through the National Park and then we're going to go to a, an arch or uh, take a hike to an arch called Delicate Arch because it looks very delicate. Arches National Park is one of the most visited national parks in this area, thanks largely to the impressive claim to fame of having the densest concentration of natural stone arches in the world. There are over 2,000 documented arches in the park, ranging from silver thin cracks to spans greater than 300 feet. Much of the National Park is experienced via a very well signposted scenic drive, with stop-off points along the way where you can hike varying distances to get closer to the arches. And that's exactly where we were headed. Darling, it says we need traction. I've got the traction. Huh? I do. Okay. Come on, let's go. Let's read the signs, mate. Okay. I'm excited. Off we go to go and see Delicate Arch. I've been here before a long time ago. And I remember it being a nice walk, a nice easy walk. And then you get to the end of the walk and you've got to sort of scramble around the edges a little bit to get to the actual arch itself. There is a roadway um, that you can drive down that gets a lot closer to the arch. So if you don't fancy the walk, you can go for a viewpoint in a different way. But this is going to be around about a three mile walk, five kilometers. Nice. Nice and easy way to start the day. Yeah. Off we go. Oh, okay. the drive into the park. Beautiful. Amazing. This is absolutely the best time of year. I can't imagine anyway being here at a better time of year. Not very many people around. Not too hot. Not too hot. How many people did they say come here every year? Over a million. Over a million people every year coming here. So, and, and today's pretty quiet. There's hardly anybody here. And it's a bit, oh, so just lovely. Beautiful. And you've, in the distance. They even have webcams at the, at the, on the road coming in here so that you can go onto the website and see mm. how busy it is before you get here. And they have to close the road sometimes because it's too busy. Too busy. And sometimes it can be closed for three to five hours while they wait for congestion to clear. Wow, okay, so. Like it's legit actual problem. Quite right. We're here in March. There's still a little bit of snow on the ground. And in the distance, in the far distance, you've got the mountains and they're all snow capped still. Beautiful. And actually from April 2022, you have to pre-book your entry time slots. They're piloting a new system because it's got out of hand. So I was reading The Lonely Planet this morning on the way here and they were describing Utah as nature's playground and like a really good best kept secret which obviously Arches isn't because it gets so many visitors but it really is very very beautiful around here. Yeah, special place. How are you feeling? I was energized as 
this to me. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, okay. It's, I mean, we are very spoiled here. Look at the surroundings. It is pretty, well, I say pretty, it is awesome. But I think, yeah, uh, I think last week's walk. Yeah, the one through Capitol Reef was just, I don't know, it was epic. To the point where it just makes your whole being like buzz with excitement. But I also think we haven't really eaten properly today. We haven't fueled our bodies properly. And we had a broken sleep, so. Yeah, Crusoe kept us up. I think we're always feeling a bit like, yeah. Okay, Have a look. A couple of years ago, we did a hike up the side of one of Finland's tallest mountains called Sanna up in northern Lapland, Finland, Lapland. And the top of it was a lot like this. Just a big rock. Yeah, you're walking along a big rock in an upwards direction. Beautiful mountain. Do you remember that walk? Loved it. Wonderful. There were reindeers everywhere. Yeah. You've never seen it. Go back. Yeah, that's true. She did. She sang Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Tara has Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer <laughs> stuck in her head at the moment, and she knows all the words. All the words. I still remember all the words. Go I'm for not, it. It's not the longest. I'm not singing it. Sing it. No. Go on, do it. Uh, uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. No, darling, that's for your ears only. Come on! <laughs> Your mum and dad want to hear it. Nope. They do. Uh -uh. I'll start. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. <laughs> and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. <laughs> okay, we all know those words. What about the rest of them? All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh to <laughs> It's great. Then all the reindeer loved him as they danced around in glee. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, you'll go down in his story. history. History! <laughs> That's fantastic, darling. Well done, you. That is going to be in our heads all the way to Finland. <laughs> Good. Um, well, we've been on the road for a long time. We really have. We're very, very lucky. We are. Hear that, Crusoe? You, boy, are very, very lucky. <laughs> I think there's also a difference between the last hike we did in Capital Reef where... You're kind of going around corners and there's short climbs and then sort of rocks and stuff. But you don't kind of feel how far it is. With something like this, at points, this feels like a bit of a slog. How are you doing, Crusoe? That uh, arch is over this way. Nearly there. I don't know what's happened, but John's up the pace. I can hardly keep up. He seems to be in some awful hurry. We're nearly there. Just around the corner. That wasn't nearly as far as I thought it was. No. It's pretty, pretty easy walk as well. Gentle incline. Yeah, not so bad at all. Okay, it's taking a turn. <laughs> Something got really icy. I have an actual chronic fear of my feet slipping. And it's only getting worse with age. So things like ice skating, worst nightmare. Sand dunes, really don't like them. Ice on rock, it's pretty up there with like, it just it brought me to tears. It literally brought me to tears. I just had to hold hands with a stranger to get around a corner. <laughs> Not cool. Husband. Because my husband just goes, come on, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, my nerves. As is often the case when something pushes you to the limit of your comfort zone, it was all 100% worth it. After braving the slippery cliff edge, we rounded a corner to be met with an arch so delicate and impossibly situated that it's almost hard to believe it's real. Stood as if to frame the extraordinary landscape that stretches endless below it, delicate arch almost has to be seen to be believed and we were awestruck.
Okay, so that's the delicate arch. delicate arch. Now we're going to go and have a look at a couple of double arches, is it? I think so, but we'll, let's take the Crusoe to the sand pit first. Sand pit. Right, Crusoe. Hear that? Let's go. No slipping. There is a strong chance that Crusoe isn't going to make it to the sand dunes. We're nearly at the car. Maybe we'll, um, maybe we put him in the car chair. Yeah. We go for a bit of a drive, go see those double arches. Yeah. And then come back to the sand pit. Yeah, cool. Good or something idea. like, where, where, which order are they in on the map? Um, sand dunes is further up, double arches on the way back to the gate. Is it? Mm -hmm. Crusoe, bad timing, little man. Bad timing. I am starving, though. I am starving, too. We haven't eaten today. It's about two o'clock. On the subject of food and eating, I don't know if we're missing a trick, but... It's really hard to eat healthily in America on a budget. It is, yeah, it is. All the kind of healthy food is mega expensive and all the really bad for your food is mega cheap. Yeah, so we found a Taco Bell the other day. Did a veggie a, burrito. A veggie burrito, lots of beans in it. Mm -hmm. um, it was so $2.50, which was great. Yeah, $2.50. But then after that, I mean, we had it for supper. Can you imagine, you know... What the room smell like in the morning. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> so anyway, that has got a point, you know. And then, and then of course, where do, where do you eat? You eat out. Yeah. I um, mean, then it's expensive. Yeah. Don't have too much money, so. No. On a budget. They're finding it really hard. And I'd say it's my biggest challenge is traveling with Crusoe on this trip as well, is trying to feed him without having cooking facilities and making sure he's getting enough good stuff. Yeah, always look at the labels, aren't we? Yeah, and obviously not eating meat, it's, it's hard. Anyway, we are managing, but it's not easy. Well done, Dolly. We're getting so good at this transfer. Got given this very handy map at the gate, which is great. So we've just come in from here, a delicate arch. Um, and now we're going to go right and go up here. Salt Valley Overlook, Fiery Furnace Viewpoint, Sand Dune Arch, which is where Crusoe was going to play in the sand dunes, but he's not now. Um, and then, yeah, a few more arches up here. And then on the way back, I'm really keen to go and see the north and south window. Double arch, parade of elephants, Garden of Eden. What do you reckon? Sounds perfect, darling. Let's do it. Let's do it all. So which way are we going at the T-junction? Right. I keep looking across at those mountains, just over that way. Um, um, and they are so beautiful. And I'm really excited because we're heading in that direction, um, starting tomorrow and then onwards. Um, we're going in the direction of those beautiful white, white snow-covered mountains. Can't wait. Can't wait. Mm. This has to be my favorite arch. Wow. Look at that. Since Crusoe was having a nice long nap, we didn't stop again after the double arch and instead just drove slowly through the park and enjoyed the views. We're feeling so fortunate to be here at this time of year. Although some trails remain closed because of the conditions, we're loving the space and lack of crowds, especially in a place like Arches, where to slow down and just take it all in is all part of the magic. At the end of the day, we made our way back down to the very cool town of Moab, where we spent the night. Stop on our second day in the Arches Canyonlands area is the famous Dead Horse Point State Park. It's not covered by national parks, so our pass doesn't work here. We have to pay another $20 for the vehicle. And there's a four mile hike to Dead Horse Point, which we're going to do now. Right, we are ready. So we just paid our 20 bucks. We're going to put that on the dashboard of the car, and I have a map. So, um, we want to go to Dead Horse Point, which is East Rim Trail. And then there was something about combining it with the West Rim Trail and making it into a four mile hike. Yeah. So, um... Are we walking in that direction? I think so. Because I know I'm not walking down to build that canyon back up again, darling. I'm sorry. That sounds like fun. No, it doesn't. And if it's not fun, we ain't doing it. First rule in the newbie house. Ah, 
man. This just doesn't do it justice. I, I don't know if the camera is good enough. You can pick out all of the layers and all the striations in the rocks. But pretty much as far as you can see. And down here in the valley, we've got the Colorado River. That's terribly bold, darling. I like this bit, this, this bit here, right here, it's nice. Such a wimp. So coming up in this series, we're heading to the Grand Canyon. It's on the, on the route after Monument Valley and Mese Verde and all other cool places. And there is a skywalk at the Grand Canyon. Tara and I have just been talking about it. No way. No way. You are getting me on that. No way. What so, a wimp two bonuses with that one it's very expensive to do it so saves us a bit of cash and number two well number two i don't have to do it oh, no. No. <laughs> you can do that oh dear wowee dead horse point is a place of many a ghost story myth and legend it gets its name from a very sad tale of a group of cowboys who corralled a herd of wild mustangs on the point, selecting the best horses from the herd and leaving the rest to starve and die of thirst rather than releasing them. Many people speak of ghosts of horses and cowboys roaming these canyons and cliffs. We thankfully didn't see any ghosts, but there was no shortage of goosebumps as we appreciated these incredible views. I don't think you're going to like it, darling. You do. <laughs> Canyonland National Park, four miles down this road. So the, the horse's place, the dead horse thing, is over there. We've just come from that now. Lovely walk. Can definitely recommend that four mile walk. It was yeah. beautiful. Really um, beautiful. And now we've we've taken a turning and we're we're heading off to Canyon Lands. Um, so you've got Dead Horse, whatever's point point. You've got Canyon Land and Arches National Park all within the the vicinity. Yeah. All, yep, Grusso, absolutely. All within the very close vicinity of Malb. So it's got Malb is a great great um, springboard for adventure these maps and little kind of information booklets that you get at the park's gates. Super helpful. Love it. It's got loads of info about the park itself, hiking trails, just interesting facts, obviously the rules, and then you get this little one as well. Very impressed. You excited little man? Let's go. Let's go. And finally, as if saving one of the best for last, we did a short hike to another arch in Canyonlands. Crusoe was treated to a ride on Dad's shoulders and what met us was truly extraordinary. We sat for a while, taking it all in. It's places like this, moments like these, that make us giddy with excitement for the beauty around us. No matter the darkness of today's news and the state of the world, there's beauty to be found. So if you're needing a moment of solace or to find comfort, we recommend spending time out contemplating Mother Nature and her splendor. It really is balm for the soul. Once again, folks, thank you so much for being here. The adventures continue next week as we head towards the infamous Monument Valley. We'll see you there. It's just the perfect frame, it's amazing.